You're catching up with Rude Dits and Laws for breakfast. Thanks to Sterling Homes. Make the move and visit sterlinghomes.com.au today. I have some exciting news. What news? You are fake news. Well, that's good news. Triple M Breakfast with Rude Dits and Laws. Overnight news. Oh, big news in today's paper, or front page of today's paper. Stormy Summers has passed away over the weekend at 78 uh, years of age. She is the most famous uh, brothel owner, the madam of a brothel in South Australia. Brothels are illegal. I don't know how the hell she's got, she lasted that long. Where was her brothel? Uh, I think you will find it near Light Square somewhere. That was a trick question. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you walked straight into that. Oh. I didn't walk into it. You want the longitude Everywhere. and latitude? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what were the opening hours? Yeah, uh, 24 There seven, are a couple around the place I've heard about, and I just don't know how it works. But just none to the level. This lady is out on her own in terms of, you know, st- if you say stormy summers in Adelaide, most people know all about her and... Has uh, there been a TV show made about her yet? They've done a, I think over the last year, they've collected a lot of information and I think there's a documentary about her life perhaps on the way. She did a hell of a lot of campaigning over the years about legalising yeah. the industry and, and politicians were on board with her. And she yeah. was, So she was very respected. And if you read the article today about Jess uh, Adamson did it, she said lots of very, very positive things about her. Um, so yeah, rest in peace, rest in peace. And, uh, yeah, big name in South Australian history there. Yep. Now I feel like every time a nutritionist opens their mouth, they tell me something that I don't want to hear. And uh, look, it doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means I don't want to hear it. Um, a nutritionist. Well, that's about 90% of the time. Is yeah. For a nutritionist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's an expert. He's called Ryan Davidson and he's come out with the things you shouldn't have before a flight. Because when you're up there, it's a different attitude. Your body behaves differently. Yeah. Said before nothing a flight. Before a flight. I don't know about you, but I feel a bit crap after flying. I feel a bit bloated and puffy and just zapped. Long haul flights, for yeah. sure. Yeah. He said nothing that dehydrates you. So he said even tap water can be bad. Like oh, he's like, you yeah. want the purest oh, of mate. stuff in your body. What? You want a, a fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, um, high. Oh, lots of that on planes, yeah. Yeah. Well, he w- says as much. Let's go to the market. As much fluids as you can get in you. And because yeah. they put so much salt in the food because you can't taste as well when you're up there, there's a, it dehydrates you even more. So he said the worst thing you can possibly do is have a beer before you get on mm. or a glass of wine. Mm. And I said, Calm just shut up. Shut up. Yeah. Tell them to get stuck. Yeah. yeah. You can take anything away from me, but you can't take the Cooper's Ale House pre-flight <laughs> no, beer away no. from me. That's, I mean, it, Especially it if it's holiday. If you're travelling for business or travelling <laughs> to commentate footy, there's a big difference to we're all meeting up and everyone's off to Bali or yeah. something like that. you got to relax before of course you, you fly. Do. I fully agree. So, you know, yep, sure, that's probably why I feel like shit at the end I'd of the flight. I'd rather be but... dehydrated and relaxed than... Yep. Yeah, all plump dehydrated. and juicy and stressed. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, don't like that idea. What's hey, uh, we've mentioned cars? this before on this show, but flying taxis... And everyone goes, oh, it'll never happen in your dream and whatever. It won't happen. The UK government is saying within two years now, Mm. and there are some incredible pictures online of how luxurious these things look. Is this only for George Jetson? Well, it's hard to say, but it looks like they're expensive. I can't see our local cab drivers lining up to buy one because they do look extremely Mm. expensive. Uh, But, you know, the UK, Rue, you always like your, your... Economics. They're saying by the end of this decade, it's going to add forty-five billion pounds to their economy. Now, how I don't know, but that's the ease, ease of worth. getting around or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, huge. well, traffic over there is a nightmare. So it is. there you go. And this is just something. I mean, I don't. It's called Schadenfreude, isn't it? Yep. When you're laughing at others' misfortune, and yep. I'm not laughing. Well, you're at wishing them, but for it, aren't you? There is some sort of rivalry between Victoria and South Australia, and I did read this morning that Victoria is the most vi- fined state in Australia, so they got the most. Right, Speeding it, and right. all the fines. Parking fines. Parking Jeez, fines. Don't move in. I, know, I, know. I reckon I we're good at it. And so they're even better. Yeah, a billion dollars ne- they nearly made in revenue. Mm. So apparently it is just crook over there. You can't can't do anything without yeah, getting walking. caught. Yeah, it's all just, ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Do you want to know something? I just was scrolling through my contacts the other day and I realised I had parking fines saved as a contact. That's how much money I owed them that I had to Speed have them off. in my How does it feel that you're free from all that, e- that part of your life? Yeah, really good. It really good. I mean, be. it's been replaced with other stresses, but, you know, it's, it's good to not have that on my back. Was it the first thing you used to wake up and think of it? It was up there. There were a couple of other things, <laughs> but uh, it, that was up there, yeah. 
Celebrities. Got a bit of celebrity news for you. Influencers. Instagram, Triple M, Adelaide page, whatever that means. He's got his ear to the ground. Uh, yeah. It'll be downloaded, uploaded. What do you do? Uh, it's awesome. time for Chris Dittmar's OMG. 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 Well, celebrity news right off the bat. Some, I, I'm not doing it. I oh, know. I'm sorry, Dick. There's some celebrity goss. Well, I Jesus. just found these stories and I said, yeah. should we do a celebrity goss? And... Yeah, okay. Tell us about it. All right. Well, thing. let's start with the royal, shall we? Kate Middleton's still sort of missing, apparently, which is just a Why weird... Why she just come out? I don't know. I feel yeah, like release she... Release an honest statement. She should hold a newspaper up and say, I'm fine. I'm alive. Yeah. Um, or, or if she's not. Apparently, she's been seen at the shops, though. <laughs> Uh, there were no paparazzi for some reason, oh, even though they're out. freaking there everywhere. Paparazzi Couldn't have been hanging for every step. And shoppers who were definitely not paid money uh, by the family said she was very healthy looking and safe, and it was nice to see her. Oh, out she about. doesn't just whiz down to the local no, shop, sure. Uh, she does do that, oh, but come on. normally not she's not missing. So it's, yeah. Anyway, so Kate's missing, and Kim Kardashian's gotten involved. God knows why. She's popped up a picture of herself on Instagram, and the caption just says, On my way to find Kate. Ah. And now everyone's going, well, Kim, that's a bit, you know, come on now. If she really is missing, then that's a bit grotty. So Kim's jumping on board. Megan's got her um, social media back. So obviously she's seeing an opening in the (laughs) the fan. She's she's got Instagram back and she goes, oh. Or she just thought there's a bit too much attention on Kate now. Uh My turn to shine. Okay, so I'm going to get Instagram. Watch watch the content, please. Yep. All of this aside, Prince William might be getting his own TV show. Oh, not Prince William, sorry, Prince Andrew. Get your princes right. Sorry, Prince Andrew. You know the one with the island and yeah, everything and the sweat. Epsteins, the Epstein. sweating and oh, that, that awful one. BBC interview <laughs> the we one did. one with a teddy bear yeah. on his bed. Yeah, yeah. odd oh. man, very odd man. Peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat um, or I didn't sweat at the time. They're going to make a series about him. Yeah, Gillian Anderson is going to play the BBC interviewer. She's fantastic, so I'm looking forward to it. I wonder if they'll, they'll have to spray sweat all over his face. And <laughs> yeah. I thought he said he couldn't sweat. Well, this is the thing. He can, Dits. Oh. He absolutely can. A sweat up on Epstein's Island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, Idris Elba. I like Patina. New James Bond, apparently. Um, this is according to fans. They've just done a poll with, with English fans and said, who do you want to see? He got one-fifth of the, the whole thing out of, like, 30 dudes. Take over from Daniel Craig. Yep. Idris, he was in The Wire. He's great. He did come out last year and say that he didn't want to do it because he's a black man and he said that so much of the conversation ended up being about race. He said, I just got put off of it yeah. completely. Uh, he said, I just didn't want it to be about him being a black James Bond. Otherwise, he would have loved to have done it. Yeah, um, yeah. A couple of other people on the list, Henry Cavill, who's my personal choice just because holy doodly. Oh, it's, he used to play uh, Superman. Superman, and he's just a hunk. He's Can you be Superman hunk. and James Bond? Yeah, this is the thing. It's a bit weird, isn't it? They're a bit um, the same, aren't they? Tom Hardy. Oh, not really. Tom Hardy's uh, also in right, the mix. who's he? Uh, Tom Hardy. The uh, artist? He, he's a, no, he's a, <laughs> he's, a brilliant, um, he's a brilliant actor, Tom Hardy, but he's a little bit too famous, I think, as you kind of want someone who's not too well-known to, so that they can make James Bond their own. Aaron Taylor-Johnson is... Way up there with um, the Broccoli family's favourite. So the Broccoli uh-huh. family decide who James Bond is. They're producers. I know, the they're broccoli. called the Broccoli family. I know, it's insane. <laughs> I sound like I'm having some sort of stroke, but I'm yeah. not. Aaron Taylor Johnson. And what do the Carrot family think? <laughs> no, no. No. Yeah, no. the whole vegetable the turnip, draws in there. blow with the Apple family. Yeah, yeah much of <laughs> out of it. It's wow. he's, veggies, a, he's a favourite, but let, let's have a listen to Roger Moore speak, okay? I'm now aiming precisely at your groin. Ooh. Says, speak or forever hold your peace. But James, I need you. So does England. <laughs> <laughs> so right. that's that's what we think when yeah. we yeah. James Bond, yeah. This is Aaron Taylor Johnson's voice. Well, the thing about this movie is there's the originality, right? This is a movie that no, no one really, I mean, this is based off, an, off of a book, but like there isn't any huge expectation behind these characters, right? For the most part, they're unpredictable. They're things that, they're, it's yeah. refreshing. Mm. Anyone that says things. You Bond. can't be James Bond. James Bond. Mm. There's a bit of Michael Caine about it. Yeah, <laughs> shaking, young, shaking young not stirred. Yeah. Actually, you've got Vodka Cruiser. Yeah. Like, that doesn't sound right. James Bond. You no. can't. So he's going to have to have elocution lessons. Um, let's move on to Donald Trump. He should probably be in uh, another segment, but he's in Celebrity Goss. <laughs> he can be whatever he wants, he's a big, That's exactly right. He's coming out and he's, well, I don't want to say threatened China, but he's had some pretty big words for China. Tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, 
Those big car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, you're going to not hire Americans and you're going to sell the cars to us now. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. Oh, hey, putting some tariffs on them. Come on, make a big statement. Yeah, come on, Trumpy. I mean, coming from a country that, you know, we made one small comment about China and we it decimated an industry. So <laughs> just, I would be careful. They but, a little uh, bit more power than us, America. He must know what he's doing because he's uh, just absolutely trumping the polls over there. Uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, Celeb Goss, there well you go. Well done. I liked it. It's the laws, Triple M. Uh, everyone can relax. Kate Middleton's alive. Oh, really? What's she's happened? fine. How do you know this? There's a video. I'm looking at Sunrise right now. Oh. She's walking on the, she's at the supermarket. she rung you or something. No, she texted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's fine. Everyone can just get on to obsessing over all the other stuff that they obsess over, like their exes and whatever it is. But this, she's fine. Why haven't they just come out and I think she said she's okay. Recovering from surgery and she didn't want to do a do it. She just so didn't she want did to. She did a Photoshop photo. Yeah. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> yeah. Right. We've all done about that. Not looking and feeling our best. Yeah. No, I have She's alive. But she's alive. She's fine. Everyone can just calm down. You can see the video. Oh, you can she? Google it. Oh, stop it, Hamish. Mm. You know really what's going to happen she now? Looks a bit is it skinny? Really a... It's a deep fake. She's probably a bit skinny because no, she's recovering joking. from surgery. It's <laughs> If this is a deep fake, then bloody hell, it's good. We're deep fake, do you mean AI? Is it AI? Yeah, it's not AI. How do you know? How well, do you tell? Well, you don't, Dits, but you just... <sighs> All right, fine. She's she. It's fake. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> she's a robot. <laughs> For all your steel supplies, it has to be Centurion Steel. Centurion.com.au G'day, it's Tex Walker from the Crows. Come on. Let's talk about Tex. Oh, Tex is in the studio. G'day, old fella. How you going? Good old fella. How's, how's the back yeah, going? He's, he's, he's walking frame. Yeah, I know. well, I'm here to help, actually. Because before we get into the footy stuff today, I am right. here to help you. Because I really, really want you to get up this week. Do you? I've, I've rung around yesterday. Mm-hmm. I've got you... Here you go. This is the first. I've got your $50 voucher to Scooter World to get you one of those mobility yep. suits. Yeah. Yeah. There you That'd go. Just down down Scooter Road. World. Yeah. I've got you a night stay at Clayton Church Homes. Mm-hmm. That's and for one, the listeners, the you've actually village. gone and laminated these, yeah. these yeah. special. They're real vouchers. Stay. I've got you a rehabilitation voucher at Keys of Training mm-hmm. for 50 bucks. There you go. Oh, Keys there you go. Are, What's that? They're they're physio strengthen. and a bit of strength work yep. for you as well. What else you got there? I've got you, I don't know about this, this might be a bit premature. I've got you a tenner men's pack. These are those undies that you wear in case you soil your pants. Or whatever. There you go. They Didn't got you get the work. hearing aid stuff? Are, the, are they similar to the ones you got on? I got it. Yeah, they are. So I got get special. He doesn't discount. have to leave the studio. I got at your all fifty dollar voucher for a posture care chair. Yeah. Mm. All right. For when you're at home watching your movies and uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying That's to get so you up lovely, this week. That's so lovely. Dits. Oh, yeah. Dits what got you all that calm, stuff because he went to all those places for himself <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. While he was in there, he just sort of <laughs> get a two for one. Will yeah. I see you down there? Yeah. Can we go together? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, have you shifted house? I was knocking on your door, said I came round to watch the footy, but I just didn't get let in. Yeah, that's because I didn't let you in. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> anyway, let's get to the footy. So, yeah. uh, now, training tonight. Tonight. Where are you at? At Triple M Studios no, at the moment. where are you at with your back? No, nah, we'll, we'll see. If I get through tonight, I'll, I'll be all ready to go on Friday night. Yep. So. You walked in here, all right? No, nah, I'm feeling heaps better, which was, as compared to this time last week, I was in an average state, but um, yeah, the old back spasms aren't fun at all. How'd you do it? I did a little bit of lifting at the club, and then I, uh, the next day, I went to pick my daughter up, and mm, yeah. well, you threw your back out putting your daughter picking your daughter up. Well, I sort of, I think it's after lifting a bit of weights, and then yeah. the next day, mm. I was a bit cold and you went sneezed. to pick Hattie up, and I oh, <laughs> don't uh, sneezing, That's laughing. How you do half your I know, I know. Yeah. I know. things like that. Hey, but it's I improved know. out of sight, so I'm. Oh, I'm I reckon uh, he looks fine. Walker out, sneezing fit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he coughed. He's yeah. out. Yeah. Kane Paul Johnson did his high. hamstring getting out of the pool one day. Yeah. Who? Kane Johnson. Really? Yeah. You wow. can do or in it's the, a phoner actually. Yeah. yeah. You hurt yourself. Well, you do it. It's only it only takes a little thing to 
to get an injury sometimes, but um, no, we'll be. I reckon I'll be right. Yes, yeah, good. Definitely. Well, it's perfect conditions Friday night. Looking like it's going to be twenty five degrees, so it should be good. What happened last week, though? Lots of uh, crows people frustrated at what happened in the first two, maybe three quarters. Uh, just didn't look like the crows of twenty twenty three. Yeah, our flight got delayed, Rue. We didn't get there till half time, oh. and then we started playing some good footy. <laughs> no, was, the boy, uh, we reviewed it yesterday. It was a disappointing start to the year, but. Um, on the positive side of things, we, we played some pretty good footy over that 20 minutes and nearly stole the game, but we uh, we probably need to do it for, not probably, we do need to do it for four quarters and stay in the fight a little bit longer to be able to um, test out the opposition. So this is a serious question. Was yep. it in the end, uh, we can't win, just throw caution on the win and we'll just absolutely have a crack? And my question to you is sort of, it doesn't mean you take the shackles off earlier in a game. If you, if it's not working, you know, why why wasn't there that let's just have a go and kick goals? It, and... It'd probably look like that from a supporter's view. Like, you know, it's, I don't think there was a message sent down and go, righto, boys, let's try and win the game. It wasn't like that. Um, sometimes fo- our game's very funny and things happen, but I think the boys just sort of finally said, righto, let's just have a crack at this and... And they did really well. Um, but the first half, we were just – that Gold Coast was super clean. They adapted the conditions quicker than we did. I think it was pretty simple. All right. One of the important players was Isaac Rankin. Where's He's, where's he going to be best for you, in on ball or kicking goals? Yeah, look, we're trying to filter him through the midfield. But um, I think it's a sort of situation of the game and where do we need Isaac at – you'd love to have two or three of him, but – um, you can see what he can do in the midfield, but you can also see how dangerous he is ahead of the ball. So, yeah, we're just trying to work out the, the best sort of ratio of midfield time to, to forward time. Well, Tex, Paddy Dangerfield and the Cats come to Adelaide Oval Friday night. Did you watch much of them on the weekend? Uh, bits and pieces. I was flicking from our game to their game just to yep. forecast my mind All right. seven days ahead. Mm. All right. What do you think? What are your thoughts? They're good. They're going really well. Um, they obviously play a very... Um, Good team defence. Uh, they got some balls inside and a fair bit of firepower up front. So we're going to have to um, be re- on Friday night. If we're going to beat them. Saints nearly knocked them off down there, though. So I think they're gettable, but they look a little bit fitter, don't they? Look, yeah, I they think do. They, yeah, might have had a bit of a hangover last year. Yeah, and they stole our coach Jimmy Raleigh. Looking forward. James Raleigh, yeah, oh, he's down yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about Tasmania? We had the release yesterday, and uh, they're coming in in 2028. They had 50,000 people sign up to be members. Looks one like... of them was one of my good mates, Rui. Yeah. Trainer. Can't believe it. Like, he's he's avid Crows fan. It was a, I was in a group message with all my mates from home last night. A few of my mates are just red, blue, and yellow. And he he's a massive – loves Ricky Ponting. Right. And he said last night that he's, he's – going to buy a membership. What, just support and I said, them. well, you're a trader if you're going to do that. And I'm not going to so talk. You can have a second team, Tazzy. Yeah. yeah, but a member. Just for now. Do you buy a membership for your second Ten team? Ten bucks. Well, oh, let's, let's, let's support them to let's get them over the line. line. No, nah, it's good Ten for Tazzy. It's good <laughs> to see him. I'm going to get one. It was always, <laughs> always going to be the Tazzy Devils. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I thought, oh, yeah, what else are you going to do? You like the Guernsey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the Devil. <laughs> I like the devil. Yeah, that's cool. Devil's yeah. got a bit of yeah. go about him. I, 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 I was a bit easier on him when I found out it was just the old state Guernsey. Yeah, that that's used. just they didn't have some guy in a graphic design just studio coming up with that boys. a week that ago. That Guernsey's been around for a hundred years. Good. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, respecting the heritage of the Tasmanians. <laughs> now, Tex, uh, earlier in the week, Loz came across some information. Okay. Yeah, we do a segment called What We Learned, yeah. and this is what I learned. So I think we've all known someone who's um, put laxatives in someone's food or drink as a joke. <laughs> Tex Walker does it to me. Yeah, it's a crime. <laughs> is it? Oh, good. That's what I wanted oh, to know. It's, it's actually a crime, and we, mm. we contacted a lawyer just to see what kind of crime it was. Mm. Hi, it's Peter Jackson from DBH Lawyers here. Section 32C of the Criminal Law Consolidation Act makes food and drink spiking in South Australia against the law. Mm. This includes when people add alcohol or other substances into someone else's drink or food without their knowledge. The penalty for that offence is up to three years imprisonment. Mm. Have you got a lawyer text or not? <laughs> speak to my lawyer. <laughs> well, you might want to. I you don't brought, need to speak to him. You brought Dittmar in a coffee yeah, this morning. I'm, I'm, should he keep I'd drinking it? Drink or this a... with trepidation. It should go off in about <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> You'll be running with your bum cheek squeeze. Uh, can I Did say... you know it was a crime, though? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't either, and I'm. Uh, yeah. You may not be playing for it. <laughs> Can I say I actually physically didn't do it? So, what I'm do you out. mean? 
Well, I, I well, just know a few people. I just, I just know a few people around here. Who are you traps throwing and, under the bus? Well, I'd speak to my lawyer. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we need text this week. You're looking boys. fit, though. It's helped. Yeah. It's, it's all the laxatives. It's cleansed him out. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like having a nice luxer. It just cleans you yeah. right out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't book people uh, off their breakfast this morning. Well, let's get a win on Friday night down at Adelaide Oval. Crows fans, get down. That's going to be a huge night. Hopefully it might even be a sellout. How good would that be? It, it will be. Did I tell you I've been doing some painting around home? Got the scaffolding up now right. to do some oh. painting. and Okay. Anyway, Ellie come walking out the other day mm. and started to disturb me. Anyway, I accidentally dropped the bucket of, of uh, paint right on top of her head. Mm. So I looked down. Boy, was she blue in the face. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that is. Oh, oh good one. Get a lawyer that and is. get another writer. <laughs> yeah. Get on your text. <laughs> there you it's go. a and text Walker. All thanks to Centurion <laughs> Steel. Triple M. I cannot imagine having something up my bum like that. On Triple M Breakfast. Who else can we offend this morning? <laughs> it's time to... Talk dirty to me. Accidentally. Yeah, sometimes we say things and we don't realise how filthy they actually sound out mm. of context. Yeah. And we're running a bit late this morning, so let's get this done before we get into the 7 o'clock hour. And then sometimes we're just deliberately dirty. Yes, sometimes you are. Yeah. Those times are a little bit too gratuitous yeah, to okay. put in this segment. So right. let's start with it. We've got a couple of guests this morning. So oh. uh, we interviewed Sam Taunton, who's on the project, and Medium. he had this to say about Margot Robbie. <laughs> but also Margot Robbie touched me Ooh. on the... Um, like on the... D- reach on the... <laughs> on the d- <laughs> Oh, Gee, what? Okay. Let's see what he actually said. So Margot Robbie touched me Ooh. on the um, like on the desk. She reached on the <laughs> on the desk <laughs> on, on the desk on the arm. On the oh, arm. Like I was sitting right. next to her. Show me That'll on the do. doll where Margot yeah. Robbie touched That'll you. Do. Yeah. So he had a nice little interaction with her, mm-hmm. and we made yeah. it filthy. Mm-hmm. Um, Liam Flanagan for Triple M Brisbane was calling. <laughs> Crow's Suns game, and this is what happened. Bob Jane team arts are inside the Crow's forward 50. They trail by eight points. Quick kick off the dick. The deck, I beg your pardon, came from Alex Sexton. Oh, they were calling in Auckland. <laughs> yeah. Came from Sexton as well. Yeah. Uh, How big is your deck? Uh, is that why we had to kick one goal too? The uh, there's no Do reveal you polish your deck? Kind of just is what it is, but I thought, I oh, beg nah, your pardon. Yeah. I like that. All right, Rue, this oh, is no. you um, talking to me. Every time it comes around to you, we basically have to put a hard one in your hand yeah. so no. it goes around it another time. <laughs> I'm sorry to do that. Please oh, no. This is how it actually went. You give it away every time it yes. comes around to you. Yes. We're trying to jackpot it so we can promote it and get up to 1,000, 2,000. And every time it comes around to you, we basically have to put a hard one in your hand. Yeah. Not sure it's yeah. better with the reveal, but no. there you go. Yeah, it's talking about a little piece of paper for the quickie. The quickie. Right. Little yeah. cards yeah. With, yep. with questions We try and make them a little bit harder and, you know, sometimes. Anyway. Speaking of which, you're on the quickie today. Yeah, it's coming I up. Am. You're under pressure. I know. Okay, so this is just when you're away, Rue. Dits and I were alone and there were two in one morning, okay? Ooh. This is the first one. Morning, Loz. Morning. Gee, it was hot in the sack last night, wasn't it? Pardon? Gee, it was warm. <laughs> yes, it was. Warm night. Only got down to about <laughs> 24 degrees. <laughs> Made it seem like we were in bed together. No, it's, <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> no reveal <laughs> yeah. there. That no, just is what it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> have a crack on the way. <laughs> that was the first words out of his mouth We are a show. close team. Yeah. There you go. Um, this is us. Let's just play this out. Oh, you thought it might be bigger. <sighs> I, d- I just, I, yes, I, yeah, anyway, I thought it might be bigger too. Moving Don't worry. On. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that about? <laughs> well, I know what it was. Well, look, nothing against That's Amy because she's got act. a lot of fans, but you would have thought it might be a bigger act, I think, yeah. Oof, you thought it might be bigger. Yeah, there you go. Innocent. What was it? It was Amy Shark might be headlining, what was Australian it? Grand Australian Grand Prix. Grand Prix. She's, and the, I she's it, the music act. I thought it might be a bit bigger. For the bigger. Formula One Grand Prix. Well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this is you two ganging up on me, I think. Bit oh, of... you guys are getting oh, hard. We want to get to know our listeners. Hey, we've always been hard. Listeners. Well, oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, that is accidentally dirty. It is. Let's see the reveal. Yeah. What's going on? Things have gotten More so next. tough. Why are we getting because so tough? Because we want a bit of creativity and a bit oh, of... Oh, you guys are getting oh, hard. We... <laughs> oh, no. Still sounds bad, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds good. All but... right, this last one I'm nervous for because mm. it's... It's me, and it's long, and it goes on for a while, oh, and I don't clear it up, and it just sounds worse and worse as it goes. And I explode. <laughs> I, first of all, oh, I take us. I Please swallow. Please tell it. me all over him. I swallow a gulp, oh. 
And immediately, like, my body's like, horror, horror, this is a code black. <laughs> Get rid of it. So I spray, it, like, the everything. I just miss his face. I think a bit went on his arm. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's called accidentally dirty. This We're is the reveal. I take a big sip of. Big swig. Swig of what I think is clean, fresh. <laughs> Straight from the servo pump, two yeah. for seven ninety nine or whatever, yeah. and I explode. <laughs> I, first of all, I take this. Oh, really? Please swallow tell it. me all over him. That there was you when you drank seawater, wasn't yes, it? it was, You're bringing yeah. home seawater to Put wash your hair. hair. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Big shout out to uh, Attaboy. Robbie from Attaboy, you brought in some salt water for me. For is the, it working? It's great. It's awesome. It's oh, a great good. product. So there you go. Accidentally dirty. Let's get out of it's here. It's right. It's a Triple M. 104.7 Triple M. Stay cool with an AutoMasters aircon service. Call 1300 AutoMasters. Hey, have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Your Ruber file's been on the money a few times. Oh, so. yeah. Hey. 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 Every morning at 7.40am, hear what's happening in Adelaide first. Mm. The Rumour Mill. Oh, we've got an anonymous caller on the line. Good morning, anonymous. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, you got a rumour for us, have you? Yeah, so um, something I'm very excited about. Um, there is a 95% chance of Coldplay playing at the uh, end of race concert um, for Ooh. the Velo Adelaide 500. You're joking. Well, have we Coldplay. We've mentioned this before? We have, but it we just seemed unlikely. We haven't had it confirmed, unlikely. and I've tried very, very hard to get it confirmed from the right people. 95%, what makes you 95% sure? Mm. Well, this person that uh, told me said um, there was, and they were very high up in um, the uh, sort of organisation um, mm -hmm. of the event, uh, said there was 95%, uh, sorry, 95% chance, and it was just a matter of finalising the payment details, so how much <laughs> people are going to uh, yeah. get paid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. part of the Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's usually the, um, the thing that's to uh, hold wow. things up. Because mm. didn't we look at this and thought that it does sort of fit into their Touring and tour. everything, yeah. But they're just so massive. It's like they're it's the just biggest band though, in the world. It? Exactly. Well, and everyone can be bought yeah. if the date's right. And they're if in we Australia. Can afford Do we know they're in this part of the world doing other concerts? I think so, yeah. I think yeah. that's what we yeah. looked at. Yeah. Because yeah. they won't be coming here just for Adelaide, will they? No. No, 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 no. no they're in, it's a long they're in Australia. That work from that perspective. We just couldn't get it locked away. Now, we know Pearl Jam's been not said they're not coming. No, they're not doing it. And it's been Pearl Jam or Coldplay that were a they're chance. They're the two big ones, yeah. Good grief. Gee whiz. That would be enormous. Gonna need a bigger area. Well, they work, can't. They just. I mean, I'm sorry if they do it where they did Robbie. I'll. I'll write. Make people walk that Adelaide Oval. Yeah, make yeah. them walk. It's worth it. It's worth it for the sound quality. There's much. There's, a lot of people really love Robbie, but if or you're Vic up the Park. back, there was overlap. It can't work. Vic you Park. Just keep your ticket. Present your ticket a couple of hours later mm. down at Adelaide yeah. Oval, and mm. you're in. Yeah. Vic Park was huge for the Chili Peppers. Yeah, it was. And yep. that went well and yeah. sounded great. Yep. And as long as they right move there. it from where it was, then it'll be fine. Yeah, but the yeah. Chili Peppers was. In Vic Park. It yeah. wasn't across the road at Bartels Road or wherever yeah. they had the uh, Robbie. So anyway, 95%. That's brilliant. brilliant. It's your last chance for the Hospital Research Foundation Home Lottery. Get your tickets before March 27. HomeLottery.com.au Triple M Breakfast with Blue Dits and Rise. What's a goal? Overnight sports. Ah, the Crows train tonight ahead of their Friday night clash with Geelong. Will Tex Walker play? Well, he joined us live in the studio earlier this morning. If I get through tonight, I'll, I'll be all ready to go on Friday night. Yep. So. No, I'm feeling heaps better, which was has compared to this time last week. I was in an average state, but um, yeah, the old back spasms aren't fun at all. So no, we'll be, I reckon I'll be right. He looked good walking in here. He looked like he was normal. I think he'd be fine as long as something didn't go pear-shaped tonight. All right, and you asked him how he actually did hurt his back. I did a little bit of lifting at the club, and then I... Uh, the next day, I went to pick my daughter up, and mm, yeah. well, you threw your back out putting your daughter picking your daughter up. Well, I sort of, I think it's after lifting a bit of weights, and then yeah. the next day I was a bit cold. And it's, I thought it was a bit rough with the vouchers you gave him. 
Who were they I was for? only trying to help. Who'd you give me? What oh, vouchers? Posture Care Chair Company, and I gave him one for one of those mobile scooters. Scooter Keezer. World? Yeah. Who else? Keezer for, you know, a bit of rehabilitation. What about the walking frame? Uh, the walking frame, yeah. Anyway, we'll get him over the line. Well, He'll the be hearing right. aid one was Hear- a bit yeah. out of line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, diapers. And the special diapers get. for men as well I gave him. But anyway, he, he will be right. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Talk about uh, other things in the AFL. Uh, James Sicily has been given a one-game ban for kicking, Rue. Yeah, he's a hothead, and they had a bit of a fight there, uh, the uh, Hawks and Essendon. Uh, I don't think he'll get off. Certainly Christian Petrarca from the Demons is hoping that he doesn't because they play each other this week. You want your best players playing, so but yeah, hopefully it's a challenge and it's unsuccessful. <laughs> They're a different side without their skipper, the Hawks, so mm. uh, I think the Demons will get up there. All right, last night, big announcement in Tassie for the 19th team. They will be called the Tassie Devils, as we thought, and the Guernsey is the uh, jumper we've seen for many, many, 100 years, uh, the old Tasmanian state Guernsey. Is there already plenty of different designs flicking around on the internet? I think they'll have uh, a new one before they start playing in 2028. Uh, Brendan and Gale is the talk for their CEO. Not sure who's going to be their coach. Uh, 50,000 people have signed up to be a foundation member already. That's great. They wanted 40,000 by October, so they've already beaten that. That's a good indication that uh, a lot of people around Australia are on board with the new uh, Tasmanian side. Yeah, all right. Uh, that is our look at sport. In a moment, a little local club is taking up a big fight with a council. David and Goliath story. We hear about these from time to time and you mm. always scratch your head. It turns out the Marion Council have made a decision about the Marion Tennis Club that's been around forever and with no consultation from what we're led to believe, mm. we'll find out more, what we're led to believe, they've said we're just bulldozing your courts and we're building a basketball stadium. Let's find out more. Kim Morgan is the spokesperson for the Marion Tennis Club. Kim, have I got that right so far? Yeah, you're spot on. Uh, it's hi to you and... Uh Brew Loz and your listeners, yeah, it's, if it wasn't honestly pretty serious, it'd be just about laughable, the, the process to date. Uh, yeah, we, were, we, we got a call last Wednesday night to, from the council to say that they'd taken a decision two weeks earlier to, uh, to bulldoze the club for expansion of the basketball facility. That was the first we knew of any plan to, to raise our club. It's just it, it's pretty unbelievable to be honest, and uh, you know we're talking about a really proud, successful club, which I can tell you about. What have you won? Like ten Division One flags in the last twenty years, or something like that. So you're a successful, financially stable club. What have they said to you? I mean, obviously a basketball stadium is important, and that's a growing sport. But why can't you have both in the area? You said there's plenty of land yeah. there for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to to, to set, I, I think what they've Look, there's, to be honest, and I, I don't want to make it basketball v tennis, but I think basketball has certainly politically uh, infiltrated that council a bit, and I think they've obviously got a plan. They're, they're growing. Um, they needed some land, and I think maybe people thought, you know, if we ask the tennis club what they think, uh, they'll, you know, they won't be in favour of giving that land. The, the irony is, though, guys, if they'd asked us, like, we're we're very open to moving across the, this massive. 100,000 square metre facility, which we need about 3% of, and being closer to the footy club and the cricket club. Um, and we think there's a, a parcel around there that would suit us. Um, and we'd rather be over there. So have they offered to help you with that? Will they build you new courts and a new well, club? Well, that, that, I think that'll be the next part of the conversation. But I think the point is, Rue, that, um, that, that that conversation should have happened while they are designing a basketball stadium. Not mm. uh, The reality is, at the moment, they haven't offered us anything. Um and, you know, Chris Hanna, the mayor, has uh, basically initially we'll start having conversations about merging or disbanding it. Um, it it's just a, a shocking, I think, uh, you know, example of really poor council transparency and process. And just to, just to give your listeners a bit of a picture, as, as you said, Rue, we've won uh, something like 10 Div 1 premierships in the Glenelg Districts comp. And that's not a Mickey Mouse comp. That's where Mark Woodford came through. You know, Tanasi Kokonakis and Luke Savile, guys like this, we've played against in some pretty fiery finals. Like we're, we're a bit, I probably liken us a bit like the Port Adelaide of the old days in that comp. Probably not well liked necessarily by other clubs, but but very successful. Um, but we're more than that. We've got, you know, really strong social program. Uh, lots of really good juniors coming through, and, and and financially stable. So this isn't a club to me that it, it, you should just be knocking off. It, it's just it's hard to fathom. 
So will you be homeless if this goes ahead or will they come up with another solution if you even well, had these They're chats? now saying well, they want to talk. But, look, I suspect if we hadn't gone public, it, it was, you know, this is um, just, uh, you know, ticking a box to say we've consulted before we killed the club. I think that was the plan. In fact, I've got no doubt that was the plan. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to get a petition circulating shortly, guys, and, and we'd love to share that with you when we get it going. But um, we hope that uh, we can publicly pressured into the, the table to talk, it, it shouldn't have taken that day. You know, this is, uh, you know, we've good relationship with the council for forever. Um, and, you know, they've absolutely, you know, they couldn't even stab us in the front. They've, they've mm. you know, really gone in the back. I mean, I don't know anything about councils and how these processes work, but have they broken any rules by doing this or is it just sort of like... Well, I mean, it's their land laws and I suppose we're the tenant of the, you know, it's a bit like the big thing in tenant, isn't it? Um mm. So, yeah. Look, I'm I mean, not saying it's good. That, I just, yeah. Just no, to, yeah. Nah, I, 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 yeah, I think technically they probably can turf, if that's what they think is, you know, meets community standards. Technically, right. they probably can turf 100-year-old clubs off um, facilities that they've been, you know, loyal tenants of if they really want to. But, but um, at the moment, people need people to be out playing sport more. Yeah. Sure, certainly, if they were, if that space that you're on is more important to be basketball, then they should have come in and said, we need it for basketball, but we're going to build yep. your new courts uh, 200 metres away on the extra land that we've got, and everyone's happy. Spot on. Yep, couldn't right. have said it better myself. Good on you, Kim. Thanks for joining us. They might end up with better courts and a new facility. You never know. Mm, yeah. But the way crossed. it's been done is not good. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. yeah. Test drive the all-new, all-electric Toyota BZ4X at Peter Kittle Toyota. Three generations, one topic. Have you ever heard of the generation gap? On Triple M Breakfast. The generation gap. It's the generation gap. Ah, uh, yeah, indeed. Uh, Loz, you can uh, welcome our guests in. Who have we got? We've got someone from every generation. Yeah. We've got Mel, you're from Generation X. Yep. The Forgotten Generation. Yeah, no one cares about us. <laughs> yeah, oh. sorry about that. It's all uh, right. I actually almost thought I couldn't remember the letter of the alphabet that you were. Yeah. Just then. <laughs> What's the going X way years? too far back. What are the X years? You're an X. I'm an X, I think. Yeah. yeah. They're in between boomers and something. Boomers and millennials. Mm. We've got, are you a, a millennial? I think I'm a millennial. What year were you born, M? 1998. 98. Okay. 98. Or am I on the cusp? I think you might be a cusper. I yeah, think I you think might I'm be a cusp. Zeta. Oh. So oh, I'm the millennial right. millennial in the chat, and obviously Dits yeah. is a, a boomer. We've got another boomer on the line. Good morning, Pratty. Well, You're grumpy old I'm man. an old boomer. Yeah. I'm a Protestant. What am I, a millennial Protestant? <laughs> <laughs> right. Ticks every right. box. Now, this goes yeah, back to a story a I told yesterday where – I got home from the footy on Sunday night and all the neighbours were out in the street having a beer. Oh, And I've never nice. experienced this before, but I'm enjoying it. It's happened a couple of times. How do you go with it? Do, uh, it's, it's do good. you join in? Yeah. Is it a regular event no, or is it just no. off the cuff? Spontaneous. A couple of people see each other out the front. They go, it's a nice balmy night. Let's have a beer. Well, yeah. bring a chair. And you bring a chair out and you sit and, um, out in the street. A couple of beers or yeah. whatever. You yeah, it's want. not huge. We don't party all night. It's just a little chat for an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's good. In my childhood, we were warring neighbours. We mm. Our neighbours were, this old At bag used to knock our footy off and take <gasps> our cricket ball and she was a real old bag. Okay. I'd love so to we hear her yeah. side of the story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I've, I've now got neighbours where we all get on and have a beer. It's great. Mel, what happens in your street? Well, we moved a year ago exactly. So we moved from a place where we were so close with our neighbours. The kids all went to the same school. Oh, Everyone was, yeah. if, if they saw your bins were out, they'd bring them back in. Wonderful neighbours. Yeah. Loved them. Still very close friends with them and will be for life. And it's not like that where I've moved to. Oh, oh, no. It's actively rude and hostile. Oh. So, so I went out. Is this the, the house you bought? Yeah, it's so disappointing. You're not like that. Oh, no. I'm not like that at all. So immediately I'm like, I'm going to charm these guys. We're going to be besties as well. Mm. And I waved over the fence. I'm like, Hey, we just moved in. G'day! And he literally looked me in the eye, didn't oh. say a word, and then turned and went back inside. Oh. <gasps> You're joking. Kid you not. It was like, it was, he was definitely, you know, putting his flag in there where he's like, this is how How our relationship. (laughs) They're a bunch of young fellas. You know, they're in their 20s, share housing. Oh, they can't eyeball people. Yeah, they're like, no, you look old. You look boring. You've got kids. We don't want to know you. (laughs) I've lived in a bunch of share houses and you love the, the, Mm. the, not that you're old at all, but even if when you do have old neighbours, you love them because they give you food and stuff. That's right. (laughs) We're going to look good for you. If you're the like charming, (laughs) 
poor uni students next door. They take care of you and they yeah. look out for you. So you've got to be, yeah. I'm living in Torrensville now and I've got on each side of me older people and they're fantastic and we complain about the council, oh, we complain about stuff. the bins and we yeah. complain about the leaves falling and I just really feel like we're just, we have a common enemy and that's the council, yeah. you know. <laughs> it unites us all. Yeah, Emily. Um, yeah, we're the same. I always have a chat to the neighbours, but we've actually got a um, group chat. Our street is <gasps> oh, a WhatsApp no. group. Really? Really? Yeah, Next it's level. actually really handy. How many like, people in that? Oh, probably like to 30, 20 to 30. Oh, 30, yeah. Oh. It's, no, but I'm not sure. It's so it's it's yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> the street is very long. But it's actually so handy because if something happens in the street, you know about it. They're all over it. Yeah. I don't comment much. Yeah. Any I bad people it. in there? No, they're all good. Yeah. Mm. Not too nosy. No, it's just like bit like if you have a Has question about bid night, like, you know, this happened on the street. If there's oh. a bit of crime around, they'll be all over it. Gee, gee, so yeah, it it's actually That's quite unusual. Handy. And that they is do neighborhood watch, monthly catch ups. They wow. do, like kind of yeah. like your thing, but I don't go to them. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> what about trying, trying and involved if you could, Em? Yeah, I yeah. probably should, but take a yeah. plate, you know. Yeah, yeah, I probably should, but All right, right oh Freddy, what happens with you? Well, I've lived in Torrance Park for the last twenty years and just moved into Craigburn Farm. We knew them all, um, employment and workplace and what they do, and we tr we commute away a lot. Do the same, bring a bin in or put one out, or you can ring them up and just check on a door. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, a nice neighbourly um, way. I, I won and lost a few back when the uh, referendum was on. I put up a vote no campaign. Oh. Lost them, up 10. <laughs> Freddy, <laughs> put your flag in the ground. Bloody hell. Yeah, I did that. So we got mixed neighbourhoods around Adelaide, by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. all right. Thanks, yep. everyone.